everybody. Welcome everybody, every single one of you. Except for Will, for some reason. <laughs> she just told him we were about to start, and he gets up and leaves. All right, baby, let's do this. All right, let's oh. go. Island is game day, baby. Let's do this. All right. Next game of the, of the Stanley Cup. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's talk about the Stanley Cup playoff what? semifinals. What? Islanders, baby, game two. What just happened? The Islanders are playing right now, man. What else are, are we going to talk about? <laughs> yeah. And it's just, wait, they made it into a Stanley Cup final? Semifinals. Oh, it doesn't count as for anything then. Hey, 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 hey. Islanders, baby. Get, get Islanders, the, baby. Where did you get those? <laughs> These are my daughters how do they fit on your big head they don't my good god so so how stretch. many what do they need to do to make it into the they islanders don't win anything they have to beat uh the tampa bay lightning three more times and signs are looking good that they might and then they will get into the stanley cup mm -hmm. okay and then they have to beat whoever wins on the other side of the country interesting to bring the cup back to long island baby yeah like it was before we were born <laughs> <laughs> yeah back in the good times anyway got my, hi got my everybody. Barn Rocker ipa i'm i'm set for this i'm ready is that like the official islanders i mean it's it's orange and blue yeah it's got their it's got their guy on it that's so lame How, does it taste good I, it actually does <laughs> i i don't believe it Guys, welcome. Hello. We got a lot. It's E3 week. This is the tail yeah. end of E3. Uh, I put out the real, a video. The real news. <laughs> I got up, watched the direct, immediately made a video, just posted it a little under an hour ago. Uh, if you're here for Nintendo news and our reactions to the Nintendo direct, go watch that video because we're not going to be talking too much about Nintendo today because I spent all couple hours making the video and i don't want to talk about it anymore we'll touch on it a little bit go. at the end but you should yeah, stop you watching haven't this. heard my opinions true you should stop watching this right now and go watch my video type an exclamation point video in the chat and it'll come up and then by the time you're done watching it maybe we'll be talking about nintendo very briefly because we'll, we're holding that out till yeah. the end because i want to talk about all this e3 stuff in order uh but first, thank you to GCXC Luke for the six months. Happy six months. Thank you. Robin Battles for the four months. Thank you very much. GCXC Luke for gifting six subs. I appreciate you. Phant Phantasmagore, thank you for the four months. And Zizel, thanks for the hundo bits. I appreciate all you people. Now... Let's talk about uh, Ubisoft is the first one. I'm going to be real, which is I haven't seen a single announcement at E3 that really got me going. It, it's a very weird E3. Like, there were oh, yeah. games that were announced that I thought were cool. There's maybe, like, one game that I was super excited for. But overall, it's just like, I don't care, <laughs> which is I th weird. I think Nintendo had some great stuff. But that happened today, yeah, Nintendo, and this is the last day of E3, basically. N Nintendo definitely had, I think, the best showing, but we, we can get to that when we get to Nintendo at the end. Nintendo didn't have to do much. Everything else, yeah. every other company, I think, really, really blew it this year. Yeah. Uh, they just didn't care. Well, I don't know. I, I, don't I, think, know. It, I think it's... Uh, uh, because it's, uh, it, 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 it's an all-online situation. They just... They were like, ah, we could. Uh, no one's gonna take it seriously. <laughs> well, I don't know because I think overall, I think Microsoft and Bethesda had a good showing. It wasn't like a traditional conference and whatnot, but I think they showed a lot of good games and interesting stuff. Uh, Capcom might as well have not have shown up. Uh, Square Enix could have just done that announcement anytime, and it wasn't really like a big wow e3 presentation or anything like that we're we're, we're on this we're, we're gonna be on the second year of uh the playstation 5 and the xbox series x this holiday season will be the second 
will be the start of the second year of those consoles. Yeah. So you'd expect a lot from those companies. We didn't get PlayStation at all. They just didn't decide they weren't going to show up. They're yeah. too good for this stuff. And you know, I don't blame them. But uh, yeah. Microsoft had a decent showing. I think at, before Nintendo, they had the best showing. But again, mm-hmm. not saying much. And we'll get there. But first we got Ubisoft. Uh, what yeah. the hell did they do? <laughs> uh, well, they they showed off I... Rainbow Six Extraction, formerly known as Rainbow Six Quarantine. Um, made It made its gameplay debut during Ubisoft's forward, giving a taste of what to expect when the game launches September 16th. With development being led by Ubisoft Montreal, Rainbow Six Extraction is a PvE co-op experience where you and up to two other players can form a squad composed of Rainbow Six operatives who have joined Ash, Myra, and Thermite to form the Rainbow Exogenous Analysis and Containment Team React. Basically, this is the death of the Tom Clancy series. This makes me so mad. This ha- like this is so far removed from the point of the the brand Tom Clancy like they sh- they really should have called this something else. Isn't this just Left 4 Dead also? Is this another Left 4 Dead game? Not exactly cuz you're trying to rescue people. Left 4 Dead and uh was the other one, Back for Blood. Those are like you and three other people are just trying to survive, get to the next checkpoint and like right. try to get out. This one is specifically about going in, rescuing people, and getting out. Hence, extraction. Remember Rainbow Six Patriots? <laughs> oh my god, I wish we lived in the world where Rainbow Six Patriots existed. So this was this was supposed to come out between Vegas and uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Siege, yeah. Uh, this was in development, and they just canned it and started making Siege instead for some reason. And this game looked yeah. incredible. Yeah. This was, uh, you know, like on par with the other Rainbow Six games. It made a lot of sense. It was a little more yeah. action packed and stuff, but still, it's fine. It, it, the franchise was trending that way anyway, but it still felt like a like a smarter, more grounded tactical shooter as opposed to what you know Activision's doing and what EA is doing. This yeah. just looks like what Activision and EA are doing. I wasn't stoked when it was called Rainbow Six. What was it called? Rainbow Six. Parasite or something? It was, it was called, called Quarantine. Quarantine. I was not stoked when that yeah. was a thing because I was like, oh, great. Yeah. Now it's going to be like zombies and stuff. And this, they just went full send on that. It doesn't make any sense. It's very strange the, the, for, for this. The whole point of the Tom Clancy like series is supposed to be they're more you know, grounded, realistic, authentic takes on the subject matter. And this, they're just like, nah, bro. The, 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 nah, the, this is this is zombies and sci-fi. I used to love Rainbow Six, and it was because it's it's a tactical squad-based shooter. There's like planning involved before you like go yeah. into a building and whatever, and and uh, and the, the, it was like a simulation shooter. You get shot once and you're dead, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, I I love those games, and then uh, Siege came out. And I wasn't too thrilled about it. Because it kind of removed a lot of those elements for me. Uh, and it kind of was terrible when it first came out. It got a lot better later on. But yeah. uh, I feel like I missed the boat on it. I, I'm, sh- I'm sure right now it's great. But it's still not the Rainbow Six we know. I, you know. I feel like even still, that is a better use of the Rainbow Six name and the Tom Clancy name than this is. Because yeah. at least that, like, the idea behind Siege makes sense in within the umbrella of Tom Clancy. This does not. This does not at all. And it's not even like we're, you know, huge Tom Clancy fans or anything. We don't, we've never read any of the books and whatnot. But we, we like the games and we like the idea behind the games. And this is nothing like that. Well, this, this should have been called something new. There's some weird fantastical stuff in some Tom Clancy games that we've enjoyed, but uh, this is but, way too deep into that. This is way but too all that, far that's all in stuff, there. That's all plausible. You know, it's mm-hmm. like advanced military tech 10 years out. You yeah, know, this, it, it's not like, it's not this. <laughs> yeah, this is weird. This is bizarre. Yeah. You got like witches and stuff. <laughs> it's like, it's, just, it's very, very weird. I don't know. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe it'll be a good game, but it's not. It's not was, a Rainbow Six yeah. game. Um, Rocksmith, get out of here. We're we're not Rocksmith. Rocksmith, let's freeze Will. <laughs> Oh no, everything crashed for a second. Oh no. Is my internet? Did my internet do that? Oh my god, Ubisoft crashed my internet just now. Rip. That rocksmith crashed my my internet just now. Well, hi, Will. Hey, what happened? I'm, I'm back. Well, I clicked on the Rocksmith video, and it crashed my whole internet. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I think I have to leave the call and come back, because you're not coming in right now. Hold on. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame that on Rocksmith. <laughs> okay. So don't buy Rocksmith. They don't want us to. <laughs> Maybe I won't even... Yeah, I'm not playing any of these Ubisoft videos anymore. That was weird. Okay. Yeah. I'm blaming it on them. Anyway, so what you said, not only Rocksmith, Rocksmith... And then froze. I said Rocksmith Plus. It's um, it's now a subscription service where you uh, subscribe and you get like new songs every month to learn how to actually play on guitar or bass. You know what? So, the point I'm of Rocksmith cool was that. always to teach you how to play guitar. And this one just this just turned it into a subscription service rather than like you buy the next yearly installment of Rocksmith. I'm not upset about that because like I, I think that's the way Rock Band should have been. I think Rocksmith should have yeah. done that too. Yeah, and I feel like you know Rock Band I think handled it better than Guitar Hero, I guess. But it took them till Rock Band Four to finally just do that rather than do it at the height of music games. Um, and Rocksmith kind of came later and it tried to be different with this whole, like, learn how to play guitar pitch. Um, and it had a following and I think Ubisoft, again, it's now well after the Guitar Hero and Rock Band revival, but I think this might be unique enough to give it a shot and it has like the space to do it. Uh, why is there an acoustic guitar? Uh, you can plug an acoustic guitar in. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pull it'll it. still show you like all the the notes the proper notes and uh chords and tablature so you can basically play that on acoustic you don't need to plug it in mm -hmm. okay but if you plug it in it'll like give you the feedback next we got riders republic i want to watch this because i heard that this looks pretty cool <laughs> like uh yeah this actually this? looks very good it is uh Prepare to defy gravity and show off your wildest tricks in Riders Republic when it launches September 2nd for PC, PS5, PS4, Series X, Series S, Xbox One, Amazon, Luna, and Stadia. The new trailer for the massively multiplayer on outdoor sports playground revealed during Ubisoft Forward shows off the new Riders Ridge social space where you can learn how to do tricks, manage your career, access a variety of multiplayer modes, and share your in-game creations with other players. Plus, right now, you can register for a chance to play upcoming betas, pre-order, uh, the gold or ultimate editions, and more. This guy just he smashes into the ground in the trailer and he's got like a he's got like a cardboard <laughs> like like i don't know wingsuit i guess so this is like what's that game the ubisoft game the the, the steep oh steep this looks yeah. like steep steep but with like bikes in addition to boarding yeah it looks like there's also snowboards this yeah. Is just, yeah, this is just steep. I like this less now. But it's it's an expanded version of steep of the uh, like the steep idea because you don't just snowboard in it. You can also do other extreme sports, and it's online. It's like a well, massive well, online game, so you're doing it against other people. Steep, steep was more more of a single player experience. Yeah, steep isn't just snowboarding though. It's a lot of other stuff. They had wingsuits in Steep. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it had wingsuits. Um, I didn't know this was a like a 
like a lot of yeah this looks like there's a lot of people on screen at once that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah um I, I you know it's it's not a bad thing to have a sequel to a game like steep it's just that yeah Ubisoft has a history of just repackaging old games <laughs> and it's it's yeah. so annoying. I ha- I haven't liked Ubisoft for a while because all of their games feel like repackaging of other games. It's 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 yeah. it's gotten stale. Um Anyway, uh what's next? Uh, more Rainbow Six Siege. More cool. Rainbow Rainbow Six Siege will launch on Stadia. From this date, uh, players on PC, Stadia, and Amazon Luna will be able to queue for matches together and have unified account progression across those platforms with the launch of crossplay and cross progression on PC and cloud-based platforms. So it's going to launch on Stadia, and you can play against all PC players can play against each other, and there will be cross progression against all different versions. So no matter what service you play it on, you can play against other people, and your progression will cross over. Okay, that, I, I like that. I mean, I mean that's that's a that's big news. Like you said, Siege has had a quite the lifespan. People love that game. People still play that game. So the fact that it's being open for more people and those people can play against each other that that's a good thing. It, it, it's it's weird because like I feel like I say this a lot cross platform play and cross progression feels like a given now like something we should have for every game so like when it gets announced we're like oh duh of course it has that but i don't even think see i think siege predates when that was a thing so no it definitely does it's it's this is good we we love to see stuff like this it's easy to to uh lose sight of how like big of a deal that is when, when a game gets cross play and cross progression i mean this might get me to play a little bit of siege because uh yeah i think i started it on playstation 4 and uh now i have it on as part of game pass so maybe i'll boot it up and see if i have yeah. anything uh next we got just dance 2022 which we'll skip and then after that we have assassin's creed valhalla which do we care uh well the, the big thing is, this is the first time they're supporting an Assassin's Creed game into its second year. Oh. Oh. Which leads me to believe that we're not getting an Assassin's Creed this year or possibly next year. I hope not. I hope they take a minute to make, yeah. to, to, to develop, you know, make the next one twice as good. Yeah, they're getting, uh, they showed off first gameplay footage of the, the Siege of Paris expansion of uh, as well as Assassin's Creed Valhalla's uh, Discovery Tour. That's what they showed off for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, now, now I, I've i been stale on Assassin's Creed. We used to play them all the time. Uh, yeah. But uh, I've been stale on it because, like I said, Ubisoft likes to make the same game over and over again, and they barely change yeah, the and game Assassin's when they make Creed, it. Assassin's Creed was like the original offender of that. Yeah, and then all of their games copied Assassin's Creed. But uh, Valhalla looks way different than all the other Assassin's Creed games. So uh, I feel like Valhalla might, I might have liked Valhalla. I just, I didn't didn't really give it a chance. Yeah. I'm trying to say some positive things every once in a while, Will, because I feel like I'm just shitting on everything today. Well, it is your least favorite time of the year right now, (laughs) E3. You that's are... not true i just don't like the convention and the people who run it you are you are a known anti e3 grinch i like uh, the not, i like the the pageantry not without reason though right. we should be absolutely clear uh but yeah I, I i know you have a lot of animosity and you like to get it out of <laughs> uh directed towards I just... The ESA, Ubisoft, possibly some other companies in this yeah, press conference. Yeah, Ubisoft personally wronged me. <laughs> I I just I feel like jaded. Like I I just I, I like I'm not I'm not excited by any of these games anymore. Yeah, like like like, yeah. W- like watching that. We'll get to it, but Guardians of the Galaxy gameplay. I watched like 20 minutes, and I was like, this game. This looks like every game ever made. Why is this particular one exciting? 
It's just another yeah. third person action game, and it's gonna have the same mechanics as every other third person action game. Well, we'll get to that when when we talk about the square stuff. Cause yeah, I'm just that I'm was kind of cool. I'm just generalizing. A lot of these yeah. games are the same game with just like a skin of a of a cool popular IP thrown on top, and I'm getting yeah. sick of it. Well, speaking of a previous game with the skin of a cool popular IP over it, Far Cry Six. Now, they what, show- what was the last one I played? Did I play? Did you five? play five? Was that the was that the American one? Yeah, I did play five. Uh, I never beat it, but it was okay. Uh, the last one I played was four, and I remember playing four, thinking to myself, "This is just a not as good." version of far cry 3 <laughs> i remember that i remember looking at four and wait did i play four no i'm all messed up four was the one with um your uh pagan min was the bad guy the I, albino uh, chinaman i did not play this yeah. one it was I, it was good if you never played far cry 3 it just far cry 3 was so much better yeah i didn't i did not take that uh yeah. Yeah, five, five. I pl- I played and five was okay. Uh, I yeah. loved three. Three was amazing. Yeah. Um, apparently then, yeah. two is very good. Also, and two is apparently very different from all the other ones. I played one or two. I one is not a good game. <laughs> I might have played. One. I'll die on that hill. Far Cry one is not good. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um. But uh, three was f- amazing, and then the DLC yes. Blood Dragon amazing, and yes, uh, five was pretty good because it was a lot of there was a lot of like what was in Far Cry three, um, yeah. at least from what I remember of three. Uh, I'd be interested in six. I I actually like Far Cry as a franchise. It's just uh, I don't yeah I don't I feel like I feel like I just don't have the the patience anymore. To go through well, the same sort of video game bullshit for twenty hours to see how the yeah. story progresses, you know, like go to the this tower, is, like, now go to this tower, now yeah, go to this tower. Especially because Far Cry, it like sort of came to epitomize the the Ubisoft style of games because it's always like find the outpost, climb the tower, uh, raid the base. You can you can sneak in or you can go guns blazing. You know, it's open worlds, crap. There's crafting. And nonsense. Collect all the flags across the the game map. You know that that's like the prototypical Ubisoft game, and Far Cry like sort of, you know, cemented that status. Even like even after Assassin's Creed and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Like a good game needs to like mask the gameplay loop. You know, <laughs> like hide yeah. it from you. <clears throat> um, I'm not saying Far Cry is not good. Far Cry has been been great from what I played. Um, yeah. Again, I'm just I'm just a an old curmudgeon jaded gamer um um so for far cry 6 they showed off a little bit more they showed um like the the new weapons you can get because the like the new customized unique weapons you can get they showed off more of giancarlo esposito being the same character he was in breaking bad um but they also showed the far cry 6 season pass you'll be able to play as the previous villains from Far Cry 3, 4, and 5. So you'll get to oh. play unique scenarios as Vas Montenegro from Far Cry 3, as Pagan Min from Far Cry 4, or as uh, Joseph Seed from Far Cry 5. That's really That's cool. interesting. Far Cry is really I fe- good with having... They have great villains. Yeah. But I feel like that's like a a way to get people to get this game because something about this game isn't working oh what do you mean <laughs> like like it's a nostalgia bait play mm-hmm. like they're not they're not confident in this game on its own so even though it's got fucking Giancarlo Esposito in it um so they're going to try to entice you with you know characters from the Far Cry games you actually like I feel like they just have such great villains every time and they can't really repurpose them in any way because, you know, yeah. they're pretty much just one-offs. Uh, and, I mean, 
maybe i don't know how, how good sales have been maybe they've been down since three because i know three was like a really popular one um, yeah. maybe they're just trying to get the nostalgia bait for that because they know every everybody got that game at least um yeah big thing with far cry is like the makeshift weapons and stuff yeah uh, and, then, and then the crafting the cra- like i'm not big into crafting in games but uh in far cry 3 it was pretty good i, I was i, I wasn't uh, yeah no, that- I wasn't opposed to it it, it was pretty. It was, e- it was a pretty easy setup for the crafting. Yeah, it was. It was easy and like it was useful, mm. and it was easy to understand. It's not like Red Dead Redemption Two, where you have to find like all these different unique animal carcasses in order to craft a slightly better bag than the one you have. But I beat the entire game without upgrading anything, <laughs> so not like it matters. Uh, I uh I re- I remember it was it was fun to get the stuff too like like it it yeah. really wasn't it really wasn't a, a problem like it like it yeah. is in a lot of other games. Um, maybe I'll get it. Who knows? Uh, yeah. my my next gen systems need some you know some food. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. It's Nintendo go. time. Mario <laughs> plus Rabbids Spark of Hope. Yay! Yay! Uh, the the gang is back, and they're bringing along some new and kind of familiar faces to take on a mysterious entity known as Cursa and its minions. Cursa has been plunged into the galaxy, has been plunging the galaxy into chaos, twisting the planets with its evil influence, and consuming the energy of the sparks. And uncanny new characters formed by the fusion of Lumas and the Rabbids, Mario, his friends, and the Rabbids crew. We'll have to travel through the galaxy to save planets, rescue the sparks, and ultimately defeat Cursa. Um, y'all know how I feel about Mario <laughs> plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. I think it's stupid and I didn't like it. Uh I'm sure if you like strategy games, you'll have a great time. Uh the- if you if you don't normally like strategy games and you like this game, I'm gonna tell you you're probably just uh got Stockholm syndrome. The, the one thing that I saw that they pointed out that is actually different is because the, the previous game was a lot like XCOM where you were confined to a grid on how you moved. Right. This one, they removed the grid. So it's <gasps> free. It's free run at all times. Weird. So that feels like a significant change. How the hell is that going to work? Aisle. I don't know. Because the grid was you got to move like like a few spaces at a time. It was like limited per move. Like you gotta move, then they, then the enemies gotta move. It, it looks like there's like a, there's like a, like a, like a circle on the ground that you that you get yeah. to move around in. That's weird. I guess you get to move to like the end of the circle, and then next move you can move yeah, again. I'm not sure circle. how exactly like this will play out. I mean, it, it looks like it makes sense in the gameplay trailers, but in terms of like actually playing, I don't know. It, is that Tony the Tiger? That's Tony the Tiger. Um. <laughs> uh, I, I, a lot of this game is the charm, like the characters are wacky and kooky and stuff. I think that it's like it doesn't fit Mario at all, and I don't like it. I know yeah, that's like but, part of the point, but like I, I, I'm not down. But what charm is there? Because nobody likes the rabbits. <laughs> like that's what's so confusing about this whole franchise. Like the game came out like when when people were done with rabbits. And, and now all of a sudden they're they're with Mario, so they're cool again. Yeah, the rabbits are stupid and annoying, and he and now their whole gimmick in this game is being stupid and annoying to the Mario characters. And everyone's like, "Oh, look at it, taking selfies is so funny." Remember when this game was leaked and everyone was like, "This looks like shit," and then the game yeah. came out. You know what? It, I hate saying this, but the game was announced and the dude cried, and then everybody loved the game. <laughs> And I swear to God, that's what did it. And you know what? It worked. So good for him. It, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. No, I I don't think that's an incorrect <laughs> statement. I mean, listen, that's the account of how things went down. So whether or not they're correlated <laughs> is up to you. <laughs> I honestly, I, I don't, I was, I was baffled by, by, by the change in everyone had. Everyone pretended like, oh yeah, yeah this always looked good. No, it, when it leaked, everybody thought it looked like garbage. Anyway, uh, I'm not saying this is going to be a bad game. I don't know. It's not out yet. But uh, the first XCOM wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, first XCOM. First, 
<laughs> First Mario plus rabbits wasn't my cup of tea. It might be your cup of tea. Who knows? I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to to pull it away from you. I'm just venting at this point. Right. Oh my God! The hit movie franchise Avatar. The last game they showed off the first look trailer for Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora was released today during the U Ubisoft Forward, showcasing game footage powered by the latest iteration of the Snowdrop engine. Released releasing oh. in 2022, Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora is an is a first person action adventure experience developed by a massive entertainment, a Ubisoft studio, in collaboration with Lightstorm Entertainment and Disney. Oh. I mean, this actually looks pretty sick. <laughs> I mean, it does look kind of cool. Uh, is there any gameplay? Uh, I don't remember. It just looks like a cinematic to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they have much to show off. Yeah, I they, think this is more just about just reminding you that Avatar is still a thing. Yeah, there's no there's no gameplay, but but it's a, it's yeah. a beautiful looking game. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. I I don't understand the Avatar franchise. I, there was one well, I, movie. I look, I I will be on record, and I do not. I'm not ashamed of this. I liked the first Avatar movie. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a very good movie. I really liked the ideas behind it. I liked the the way that James Cameron was able to create this world through the technology he had developed um i don't think it's strong enough to warrant one sequel let alone <laughs> the four that he's currently filming over yeah. the past 10 years um, yeah i don't understand that either yeah so and to, to make a game of it now i mean obviously the movies must be close to done because if they're the game's coming out, then the movie has to be coming out soonish. Of, uh, I just I don't know if if people actually want this. Has, has he wait? Has he been making three movies at once? He's made he so he's making two of them right now. Okay, because he said he has scripts for Avatars two through five, but he okay. said rolling into two, two and three because if those are if those don't make money then we can't make four and five so at least he's not totally <laughs> crazy you know he's just crazy enough to think that people still want to see more avatar movies i don't know i don't know i also don't understand how it made so much money i think it, it hit at just the right time because it was 2009 this is before uh marvel really became like you know every movie they make is the highest grossing movie of the year uh, it was the first really good showcase of 3D cinema and probably still the only good showcase of 3D cinema before that got played out. Uh, also, it was one of the first major Hollywood films to do a lot of good money in China. Mm -hmm. And like China is like basically, I think it's now just succeeded the U.S. as like the number one like revenue drawer for Hollywood films. So that's why we got like so many stupid Transformers movies. It's a it's a weird case because it did so good. Yeah, it's it's like still well, it, ju it like just got superseded. Like, well, it got superseded by Avengers Endgame barely, but then they re-released it for a week and it superseded it Endgame again. <laughs> and so see, Avatar and is still the highest grossing movie of all time. <laughs> Endgame is like a like a once in a lifetime situation where there's like 20 movies that lead up to it so you have so yeah. much build up to get there avatar doesn't it just doesn't make any sense there's one movie well, and it's a mediocre movie <laughs> it, it's it's the last of a of a kind because now yeah everything's you know every, the highest grossing movies of the year are all all franchise movies that was the last time that didn't happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to read some notifications here. What was okay. the last one? Uh, do, 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 do. We got, we got a lot here. 
Hector, thank you for the five months. Thank you, Fried Biscuit, for the three hundo bits. Thank you, Spoopy Girl, for the hundo bits. Thank you, Willow Davis, for the nine months. Thank you, Fried Biscuits, for the three hundo bits. Thank you, Fried Biscuits, for the three hundo bits. Thank you, Fried Biscuits, for the three hundo bits. Thank you, Zizel, for the hundo bits. Thank you, Kiette K, for the three months. Keep up the great work. Love the aesthetic touch in all your works. Thank you so much, Kiette K. By no shadow, thank you for the nine months. Excited for Halo Infinite Battle Pass that doesn't require, that doesn't expire, and you can buy it at any time in the future. I don't know much about Halo. Uh, I, 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 I saw the, uh, I saw the, uh, the what looked like the single player trailer, but everybody, yeah. well, not everybody, Willow over there was telling me to watch the multiplayer stuff. I didn't even know there was multiplayer stuff. Yeah, they they did that separately after the the presser. I didn't know, but I did know I did know that it was free to play, which is really cool. Yeah, I'm down for that. Late Snake, thanks for the six hundo bits. You already kind of answered this, but how into hockey ball are you? Have you ever been to games? If the Isles get into the finals, Will must wear the maid outfit. <laughs> uh, we could talk about that. Uh, in terms of like how into it, I it it's Islanders or nothing. <laughs> Well, that's not true. Uh, I follow it casually for the most part. Once the Islanders like are out of the the Stanley Cup or whatnot, I just I stop caring. After the longest time, the Islanders were like last place regularly, so I, there was no real need for me to follow hockey because like who cares? They're just going to lose. But like the past you know six or seven years, they've been a, a team like an actual team. So it's been interesting again. And, you know, they've been in this, the playoffs the past like three or four. So yeah, it's, it's a good time to be an Islanders fan, baby. I used to go to Islanders games every once in a while. Uh, that's about as yeah. into hockey as I, have, as, as I am. I'll just go. Dad will be like, I got tickets. You want to go? And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> I tell you, it's, it's very different now because Especially you go to like if you go to the Coliseum, it's it's very different because everybody's crazy now. <laughs> like yep. I feel bad for the uh, for like the away teams because all like <laughs> they just get so loud <laughs> and angry <laughs> and like boisterous. Uh, it's a good time though. It's a good time. Uh, a T Faruqi, thank you for the nine months. Hey Bob and Will, been at my for a bit, but glad to see you. Thank you for being glad here. Glad to see you. You don't have to. You know, you, you come and go as you please. Uh, Mecha Dragon X for Hundo. Didn't E3 leak people? So, okay, shut up, Mecha Dragon. <laughs> Stop bringing that up. <laughs> well, he said again this year. Oh, again? Again? Oh, I just stopped reading it because I didn't want to. I didn't want to draw attention to it. I I don't know what they did it again. I didn't hear anything about the, them do leaking everybody's personal information again. Uh. All right. Anyway uh now it's xbox time yeah uh so this was like the best summary i can find of xbox but it, like it, it's super detailed mm -hmm. so i don't know how you want to do this this is you very just detailed. Like, yeah the, their one more thing is the one that they put right at the top it was it's a. Uh, who made the, what's what what friggin oh um they made Dishonored. arcane arcane, arcane yeah. studios uh making redfall which is yet another left for dead looking game yeah four four people a uh, bunch of monsters and stuff that look like they're redfall they're is a new co-op open world first person shooter from arcane austin award-winning team behind prey and dishonored play it solo or team up with as many as three friends to take on a legion of vampires that have overtaken the once quaint island of redfall in signature arcane style you will choose your path across this island and through the vampire masses as you discover what caused the plague of bloodsuckers to put an end to the threat so it sounds like it's not exactly a left for dead situation because left for dead it's you just run through the area mowing down zombies so you get to the safe house and then do it again getting to the next safe house this sounds like an actual video game <laughs> with like it's all like with mission objectives and like things to do other than that i didn't know it was uh open world yeah yeah 
uh, it's interesting. That's nice that you can play it uh, alone or co-op because I like playing alone. <laughs> this is a weird one more thing. Yeah, I don't know why they ended with this. Because usually, like, one more things are supposed to be, like, big surprises. And, like, yeah, it's nice that their Xbox finally has exclusive titles. But I don't think anybody would be like, oh, this is it. This is this is what yeah, I this wanted is the to one. I'm so happy that yeah. I stayed and watched all of Xbox because this is gonna. This is the one that I'm going to like the most. Yeah. It was, and it's a cinematic trailer. It's yeah. very weird. It is very strange that they, that they saved this for last. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, Starfield, Bethesda's uh, next it, big game. Open big the idea, show. Yes. Open the show. Um, and it was confirmed as exclusive to Xbox Series X and PC. Okay. Uh, well... I mean, it's good that we're getting some exclusives for Xbox Series X. I, well, okay, no, it's not. <laughs> it's 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 we're it's such a weird like argument because people look at the console wars and they go, Xbox has no exclusives. Why would I get an Xbox? And then a game comes out as exclusives, and people go, Why are you locking this behind Xbox? <laughs> so like, I think Xbox had the right idea when they were kind of not focusing on exclusives yeah but also if this is going to be on pc i feel like most people play bethesda games on pc anyway i think bethesda is kind of synonymous with pc at this point so um i don't think this well is, this is gonna upset that many people th this game is coming from you know the same team bethesda game studios proper that's the skyrim team that's the fallout right. team that's todd howard's team Right. That team is associated with PC gaming specifically. Right. Um Yeah, I think people are just upset because, you know, this was originally going to be a multi-platform game. Like all of Bethesda's games. But now that Bethesda is owned by Microsoft, you know, that was up in the air because Microsoft does release games on third-party platforms. Um but not anymore. <laughs> not with not Starfield. I, you know, I honestly I think, thought that this would be on PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah, no, I did too. Um, and I'm surprised that it's not going to be. But I think the whole point of this conference for Xbox was to was to do two things. Was to, one, show the value of Game Pass. Because, like, most of these games are going to be day one on Game Pass. Yes. The second they come out, you can play them on Game Pass. And two, it's to show that the whole no exclusives drought is over xbox has exclusives these are the exclusives that they have they're different from so from um sony's exclusives if these interest you you'll only get to play them on xbox uh I, yeah, the focus on game pass has been great i i, I think yeah. game pass is really what's gonna win them the the, the console war if anything um but but also as as shitty as it is exclusives are important in the console war and they shouldn't be because they're pro consumer if they don't have exclusives um but uh it, I, but it's a bad business decision it's what people seem to look at the most when they're judging what console to get and i don't blame them either like i've been saying the playstation 5 is probably the one everybody should get because it's got the better exclusives um but it's a it's a worse console <laughs> like i hate my playstation 5 it's just that there's a, a lot of good games that i will eventually want to play on it um right now there are no good next gen games honestly <laughs> um what about ratchet and clank bro ratchet and i haven't clank just came out i haven't played that and that looks sick ratchet and clank looks sick so i i, I might want to check that out uh do we have a oh we have a date yeah that 11, was the other 11, thing it, 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 yeah so next year uh november 11th very cool okay uh 2022 is gonna be crazy there's a lot of oh yeah a lot happening next year uh all right what else i don't even think there's anything that crazy well they they showed off uh gameplay footage for stalker 2 um okay. if anybody still cares about the stalker series 
Um, Age of Empires 4 is launching on October 28th on PC uh, as part of Game Pass. Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to oh. uh, Xbox Series X on July 27th. Yo, also part I, of Game Pass. Yo, I might get that. <laughs> I might... That would be sick to do a stream where yeah. you do, where I just fly, just to, fly. From, like, from like New York to Florida, and I do the yeah. whole the whole flight, <laughs> whole um, two hour flight. Back for Blood is the other Left for Dead game. So okay, so the thing about Back for Blood is from the creators, right? Of Left for Dead, it is the Left for Dead game. <laughs> It is, yeah, it is. It is just. It is exactly left. This is Left for Dead. If you if you wanted Valve to make Left for Dead three, but then you remember that Valve can't count to three, this is the <laughs> game for you. Yes. Yeah. Um. There is a lot of Left for Dead games. What was the other? Earthfall was another one. Uh, that was Left for Dead inspired. Is um, it Earthfall? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Earth. Yeah, Left 4 Dead was hot for a while. Yeah, Earthfall. Um, yeah, it's that's a weird game to latch on yeah. to that to or to, to, uh, to to get spiritual successors for. Well, back well, Left 4 Dead was like super popular, and like we said, Valve has not supported that series in a long time. Uh, Turtle Rock, the, the creators of Left 4 Dead, they tried branching out with Evolve, but nobody liked that game, so they went back and tried you know went back to their roots uh this is also going to be a game pass day one game right uh then we got some rapid fire stuff hades yeah uh, hades is coming to game pass day one among uh, us game pass among us this year Damn. When it, yeah uh the entire yakuza series is on game pass wow yeah <laughs> i didn't know that yeah they said they i mean they, they focused on yakuza like a dragon but they said that the entire yakuza series is on game pass or coming to game pass that's insane yeah uh, uh they showed off sorry go ahead psychonauts yeah yeah they showed off psychonauts 2 it will launch august 25th 2021 uh be available on game pass uh grounded gets its largest update yet so grounded, I I saw this. Uh, oh right, they spent a long time on this game. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you can sit in chairs in this game. I think people just like to sit in a game and like hang out yeah. with each other and like talk in the game. I do that in Minecraft. You just sit in Minecraft. Just sit. And just sit in a chair in Minecraft and just talk to your friends and like look at them in the game. It's very weird. It's but but it's yeah. it's. it's it's cool. Um, this is that weird, like, like, uh, Honey, Honey I Shrunk, I Shrunk the, the Kids, kids. Yeah. type game. Yeah, it's very strange. Um, apparently it's popular. I, who knew? Yeah, I didn't. I had no idea. Uh, Obsidian announced The Outer Worlds 2, which is kind of a big deal. This, this was a great trailer. You liked because it? Because the trailer basically, <laughs> yeah, because the trailer basically admitted, yeah, this is all just flash and stuff. We, we haven't done anything. <laughs> But we're making it. Yeah, it's basically a title reveal that they're making Outer Worlds 2. Yeah. Um, but, like, it was a play on how E3 trailers are all flash and no substance and don't really show off any gameplay because they have they don't have any gameplay to show off. Yeah, but they spent so much time on this trailer to do to say that. <laughs> they true, could have shown true. off the game at, at that point. <laughs> there's so much in this trailer it goes through like four different genres of, of yeah. random cool looking games um and they could have just spent that time talking about the game it's <laughs> it's it's weird um but anyway we all we know is we're getting now worlds too good 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 for them um uh captain jack sparrow will be joining uh sea of thieves in a special uh DLC update of Pirate's Life because we're still high on the Captain Jack Sparrow Pirates of the Caribbean train. <laughs> Said nobody in 2021. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online console enhanced release on June 15th. Uh, Fallout 76 is getting an update. Doom Eternal free next gen update arrives June 29th. Um, 
optimizes Doom, Doom Eternal for next-gen machines, offering improved visuals, increased performance, and support for ray tra tracing or 4K at 60 frames per second, or an optional 120 frames per second mode. Oh. I, I, so I The more 120 frames games, the better, because uh, I'm getting that monitor yeah. any minute now. Uh, that'll that'll I have, finally do it. I have Doom Eternal on disc, so when this comes, if you want to borrow it to test it out, let me know. Is that not Game Pass? Oh, no, never mind. It is Game Pass. <laughs> yeah, everything's Game Pass, dude. Everything's Game Pass. Uh, Xbox uh, and Avalanche Studios announces its next new IP, Contraband. I didn't see this. Uh, this was a quick thing. It was just, it was just, um, you know, there was going, there was a camera going through a garage that was saying like, uh, oh, we got a new game. It's called Contraband from the creators of Just Cause, uh, a co-op, a co-op smuggler's paradise set in a fictional 1970s Baya, Bayan. I don't know how to pronounce that. Coming day one to Game Pass. It was really just the style trailer, like showing off like the, the style of it. It didn't show any gameplay. It just gave you an idea of like the world and that it's going to be a co-op shooter. So that's the no for me. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Far Cry 6. Uh, they showed up Far Cry 6. Battlefield 2042. This is a trailer that pissed me off. <laughs> why like this this has made me mad so so, so we, had... this trailer was before the xbox thing uh this... right and then they showed off more details during the xbox thing it features uh maps optimized for 64 players on xbox one up to 128 players on series x um unprecedented scale adds new dimension to multiplayer battles uh also ups the action with increased with the inclusion of real-time events that reshape the battlefield and tactical combat. Uh, all new weapons, vehicles, and gadgets give players the freedom to be more strategic and create jaw-dropping battle only in battlefield moments. I didn't know there was gameplay. Yeah. That's freaking cool. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, like, like, I like Battlefield. I used to play Battlefield a lot. Um, I, I love the large-scale fights and stuff. I don't know how I feel about it now since battle royales are a thing though. Like like yeah. those type of large scale fights I feel like are more fun than team versus team large scale fights, you know? I don't know. I feel like I think this is it's good that they're focusing on being a battlefield game cuz right. the last few have tried to be Call of Duty and they like never really successfully you know, followed the trends that were happening. Mm -hmm. Um so this is a more back to basics approach. There's a lot more like verticality uh, to the levels now, uh, not just in like the planes and shit, but like the the terrain that you yourself can, uh, you know, work on. I don't know. Something about that reveal trailer just rubbed me the wrong way. I think it had to do with the fact that they tried to take uh, "Kickstop My Heart" by Motley Crue <laughs> and make it a serious song. Are you talking about the cinematic reveal? Or are you talking about the gameplay reveal? The cinematic reveal. Okay. The one that, where that a was guy a wacky ejects, one. The guy, the one where a guy ejects out of a plane, shoots a helicopter with a rocket launcher, then lands back in his plane. Yes, that is a direct nod to what people used to do in, in Battlefield uh, Four and I mean, Three. Like, <laughs> it's just just pick a tone. If you're gonna be serious, be serious. If you're gonna be wacky, be wacky. Mm -hmm. I, I'm tired of like it, it, the Gears of War problem. Where they try to present it as like the most serious thing on the planet, but the gameplay does not mesh with that at all because you're yeah. ripping people in half with chainsaws. Yes, with glee. Um, the, the 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 thing that always made Battlefield different than Call of Duty was that uh, Call of Duty is like a movement shooter. You got it's a lot of you yeah. want a lot of run around, fast paced motion, and 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 quick snap aiming and stuff. Battlefield, you move a lot slower. Uh, it, it, it's more about aiming and shooting the gun than it is moving yeah. your body around and running up and stabbing somebody in the face, um, and 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 picking your like you're like a, not loadout but like like a, you could be a medic, you can be an engineer, you can, you know, um, and it's more team based i guess like even though you're doing these large scale battles you can be in a squad of four people in the large scale battle but yeah it, it just now that battle royales exist 
it feels like you you do less like you're less useful in a in a 50 versus 50 like team based match you know yeah so it feels more uh it feels like you're accomplishing more in something like a battle royale but uh i'd be interested to see if they add anything that changes that maybe there's like little missions you can do in between that make it seem like you're 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 worth your keep um i'm interested i'm interested in battlefield 2042 i am not <laughs> well we got diablo 2 resurrected uh this is cool also and not notable. interested in this but uh it is interesting um it's coming to console because diablo 2 is of course a pc classic um you can switch between the different graphic styles of the original and the modern which which looks nice um so that'd be cool to see how it plays out on console it's coming september 23rd this year um i don't think it's coming to game pass day one but this is notable because you can use your freaking save file from the original diablo 2 yes i don't know about on console but i'd imagine yeah i'm sure they have some way to transfer it yeah uh anyway uh let's hurry up here yeah, I don't okay. see anything else uh, that, that matters too much. No, uh, Party Animals looked fun. What is that? That's about it. That was the, that animal game, that animal battle game. <laughs> oh! Yeah. That looks cute. Yeah. Uh, What else was there? 12 Minutes, that's that Anna Perna game with uh, James McAvoy, Daisy Ridley, and Willem Dafoe. Um. That's been shown before, but it showed that it's coming day one to Game Pass on PC and console. But that's definitely a game I would play on my Switch. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking uh, at Party Animals. Okay. Oh, it's like Gang Beast, yeah. Yeah. What else? We had The Ascent. We had Atomic Heart. Somerville, Shredders, Slime Rancher 2. Uh, replaced. Oh, this one looks good. Replaced. Replaced is, is a 2.5D sci-fi retro futuristic action platformer where you play as Reach, an artificial intelligence trapped in a human's body against its own will. Com- it combines cinematic platformer, pixel art, and free flow action combat with a deep, engaging dystopian story set in an alternate 1980s. Yeah, this looks sick. This, the, this looks really good. Visually, it looks beautiful. Uh, originally, yeah. when I first saw it, I, I wasn't I mean, it looks beautiful, but I wasn't like interested because uh, it reminds me of those games like uh, like Sword and Sorcery EP, which is good, but like that's more of like an adventure, like turn based situation. Yeah. Uh, this, if it's a if it's a, a side scrolling platforming uh, action game, then I'm all in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and again, it's a very unique art style. It looks it looks beautiful. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for that. When uh when's this? Uh didn't say or maybe I missed that. And it's developed by the guy I mean not developed, it's uh published by the guys who published Fogs. There you go. Code sync. Um I wonder if it'll be on Switch. Maybe maybe not. It looks like there's like lighting effects and stuff. I know, I was thinking that. Maybe there's freaking ray tracing in this in this weird pixelated game. Uh, the combat right, looks go. crazy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's gonna feel like it's uh like 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 quick like quick time events. Yeah, uh, it it does say it's coming day one to Game Pass. Nice. So that'll be cool. That's great. Then I don't have to freaking even pay for it. Will it's coming next year? All right, I'm down for that. All right. Uh, and what else? And that's it. That's it. Uh, all right. I think Microsoft did pretty good. Yeah, I think Microsoft overall had a good conference. I don't think it was as you know flashy as some of the previous ones, but I think they showed off a lot of good games. I think they got their message across. They have exclusives, and Game Pass is a good deal. So I think if you have an Xbox series x or if you have an xbox one you're in good shape because you got things coming for it yeah i uh, 
I, I mean, looking through it now, there's a lot more here that, that I liked than, than uh, I thought I did. Oh, I noticed there was no... Uh, we didn't talk about Halo at all. I mean, what's there to talk about? It's another fucking Halo game. <laughs> Let's be yeah. real here. During the Xbox it conference, looked, they, they really just showed single-player stuff, and it looked good. It looked better than the last time they showed it. True. You know, to be fair. But, I mean, what... What more is there to say about Halo that hasn't already been said about Halo? I do want to see the multiplayer stuff. Uh, free to play multiplayer is awesome. So, uh, and yeah. it's, it's is it coming to PC? Do we know that? Like, yes, yeah. first day, day one. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that means that means free to play on PC. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Uh, everybody's waiting for a battle royale for for Halo. I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, if they do it, they'll do like a Halo spin on right. it because. You know, when Horde mode was the big thing, they added that to Halo Reach. They called it, I think, Infestation mode, and it was like their twist on They put a twist on it. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, there's a lot, there was a lot of good stuff at, at, at Xbox. I think, yeah. I, I think looking back on this now, uh, there's, there's a lot of good stuff, a lot of weird stuff too. Yeah. Like, again, why, why is Red, Redfall? Is that what it's called? Why was that? The one more thing Redfall, yeah i think i don't know i guess because arcane studios is like a big deal but uh i didn't think it was one of those things where like people will just buy whatever they make <laughs> yeah it this didn't seem like i don't know it was weird it was well weird because thing. arcane you know they made dishonored which dishonored is very good mm-hmm. um i don't know many people who feel the same way about dishonored 2 and i don't know anybody who like talks about prey like at all <laughs> yeah it does have a cult following i know that but i personally don't know yeah, anybody I know. who cares about prey i know like dishonored one was excellent uh i haven't played dishonored two yet and i don't know anybody who, like really still talks about dishonored two and you know prey is prey <laughs> let's talk about well let's read some notifications first uh okay. we got sweetie pie with six months hey yo happy six month anniversary to me happy six months anniversary to happy us six months. sweetie pie the cyber quake thank you for the raid how are you doing and thank you for the 19 months bob hello hi hello cyber quake how are you uh now let's talk about square enix square enix like showed off a lot of like mobile crap <laughs> okay um i think you so this is just like the this article is just really like the stuff we would care about. If if anybody in the chat really does care that Final Fantasy one through six is coming to iPhone, <laughs> then let us know. But otherwise, Almost, there's a there's a Final Fantasy like mobile battle royale. Yeah, that they're making. That's like a Fortnite Final Fantasy situation. Yeah, I kind of want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway the first thing that's in this article is uh, guards of the galaxy guardians of the galaxy uh from idos montreal a, a single player third person adventure game and made in partnership with marvel launching october 26th um i thought this game looked good i thought it looked fun is this the same trailer that nintendo put out it is yeah well, Nintendo kind of like talked over it. They didn't really show like the actual yeah. trailer, but it, it's the same scenes. But it is way yeah. shittier looking on the Switch. <laughs> um, I'm sure we'll. Uh, well, so on the Switch, this was the only cloud game, and it said on Which the I bottom requires internet connection or whatever. I didn't realize that at first. They like because usually they say like it's cloud based. Yeah, like, they did. They hit that pretty yeah, well. Yeah, they hit it. It was weird. Yeah. Um, unless this is going to be a, a big multiplayer focus, but I don't think so. I, I legit just no. Think they it's said a, it's single player. Oh, so it's a then yeah, it's a cloud yeah cloud game. Very strange. Um, yeah, and it still looked pretty. It, uh, I mean, it looked it looked fine. Uh, um, yeah, but it, this looks way better. That this trailer yeah. looks way better. Um, yeah. that being said, I watched like twenty minutes on this game, and again, it just it felt to me like just a generic third person action game well i think what i like about it is you only play as star lord you're not hopping around between the other characters uh not that i wouldn't have wanted to play as the other characters but they're focusing on one character and you're focusing on trying to actually lead the team 
and they put in you know dialogue options and branching paths based on how you interact with the team and mm. what you do in one section will affect later on down the game they showed an example of trying to cross a path and drax says i could throw rocket across the gap and if you pick the option for drax to throw rocket later when you ask rocket to do something he won't do it mm -hmm. because he'll remember that you made drax throw him right so i like that idea of trying to like combine uh a third person shooter with uh, you know, a team management simulation. I think that's really interesting. That's not really something you see in like, you know, the fast paced action games of today. That is interesting. That is that is yeah. a good. I was gonna uh, when you said that you only play a Star Wars, I was like, that's not a positive. <laughs> uh, that's weird. Usually in these it's, games, you you get it's a team game. Why would you get to play with everybody? It, but that makes I know, sense. It, it doesn't sound like a positive, but when you think about it, when you talk it out, it it makes more sense. I would rather them focus on one character mm -hmm. and get the the overall game right than focus on all the characters and wind up with something that's uh, a lesser good version of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, like Avengers was. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 makes sense. Uh, so maybe that aspect's cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably yeah. still not gonna play I, it. I'll I'll play it. I just don't know if I'll play it on Switch or if I'll play it on an actual console. Uh, well, you don't want. You probably don't want to play it on on the cloud. I don't want to play this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I also think that the visual aesthetic of that game looks a lot better than Avengers. I think they learned oh, their yes. lesson. <laughs> And they yeah. figured out how to. I mean, it, it's obviously aping the movie because, if we're being honest, the, the movie is the version of Guardians of the Galaxy that everybody knows. Nobody really mm -hmm. knows the comic book version, but they were able to do it in a way where it doesn't look like the, the stunt doubles. <laughs> it looks like it, it's recognizably Guardians without being the movie. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. It look. I mean. I like it more now after you explained it to me. Uh, yeah. We got War for Wakanda expansion for Avengers. Expansion, yeah, coming in August. You play as Black Panther and you fight in Wakanda. Looked nice. Not Maybe gonna, I'll eventually play this game. Not going to get me this to play. Will be, this will be free uh, for people who own Avengers, though, so that's nice. Isn't Avengers free to play? No. Okay. The DLC is free. Mm -hmm. you have to buy the game i thought the game was going free to play because nobody was playing it <laughs> oh i didn't i don't know that um well anyway uh yeah i don't think this is gonna save this looks cool i don't think it's gonna save the avengers yeah um babylon's fall three years after its initial announcement babylon's fall got a new trailer with more details uh action rpg can be played alone or up to four players uh, game's latest trailer also revealed the live service aspects of the title, as well as a call to sign up for the closed beta. This sounds familiar, but it doesn't look familiar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Platinum Games. Wow. Oh, right, okay. right, 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 right. Yeah. Oh, it kind of looks like it, too. The combat looks yeah. like a Platinum game. That's pretty cool. Pl a Platinum yeah. Games uh, online multiplayer game. That'd be interesting. I think that's what Scalebound was supposed to be before that got canceled interesting okay that's pretty cool yeah. uh then we got life is strange stuff uh, life uh is strange you're getting a remastered colors. you're getting uh a life is strange remaster collection which is a remaster of the first game and the before the storm prequel and true colors is a new game um in the series yeah that's all i know <laughs> uh and then Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy. Okay, some weep shit. Yeah, it's it's like it, this is a uh, Team Ninja making a Final Fantasy spinoff. I, I guess this is supposed to be about the origin of the fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How can I don't call understand Final this Fantasy at all. Origin when all the Final Fantasy games take place in different universes. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it at all. <laughs> But again, I'm not a Final Fantasy fan, so I wouldn't get it, you know? No. 
But I like I I like to think I know enough about the series to know that you know there's nothing really connecting any of them. So mm-hmm. why would you make a game with the subtitle Origin? It's the first fantasy. You call it first fantasy. <laughs> Um, all right, well, that's it. So, uh, Square yeah. Enix, I don't even know why they do these, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> they should just be in other, uh, the, the the big three uh, uh, console uh, uh, yeah. showcases. They, they shouldn't have their own. There's no reason. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> even when they showed off Avengers the first time, it ended up being worse for them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like Square Enix, because they also own IDOS, so that means they own Tomb Raider and Deus Ex um, and, like, Legacy of Kane and all these other, like, great games that, you know, they, they don't ever focus on. They just focus on the weeb stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we it's got, a lot of weeb stuff. We got BB Retro with 13 months. Thank you very much. And we got... Mega Dragon, you would think with all the money Square has, they can afford to use the original Avengers cast. No, okay, that's going to be way too much. Yeah. Also, have you ever heard Robert Downey Jr. do video game voiceover? He's awful. <laughs> he just does not care. He does not care. Uh, all right, we got uh, Capcom, speaking baby. Of, Here we go. Speaking of companies baby. that should have just been part of someone else's press conference... Uh, we can do that. We can just blow through this. Resident Evil Village is getting DLC because the game was so popular. Um, Reverse is launching in July. Uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin was shown off. It looked like uh, looked like a Monster Hunter that game. Was also, this is also in uh, Nintendo's thing. Yes. Monster Hunter Rise 3.1 is getting an update. Uh, the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, never before released outside of Japan. Uh, follows Phoenix Wright's ancestor uh, as he does attorney stuff. <laughs> no Sherlock Holmes. Uh, the cat looks like. No, it's uh, it's not Sherlock Holmes. It's like Shlo- Sh- Sholmes. Wait, his name is Sholmes. It, yeah, it's like Herlock Sholmes or something. Oh no. Uh, brief update on the Street Fighter Five competitive scene, including the introduction of the Capcom Pro Tour 2021, which will lead to the Capcom Cup. We got... And that's it. Uh... Yeah. 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 Could have could have been part of someone else's press conference. And they were. I mean, the Monster Stories, they had that at Nintendo's. It was after this one. I don't know why they... They yeah. also, they had a, a Resident Evil showcase, like, what, two weeks ago? Like, yeah, <laughs> they could have just held off and had a really huge... Uh, well, no, they couldn't have, because that was, like, right when Resident Evil came out. So, I don't know. Probably just don't have a press conference, honestly. Yeah. It's not, yeah, not no, worth this, it. This, this could have... This could have been a. Uh, this could have been an email. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. This could have been an email, but I didn't want to encourage them because we do get a lot of E three emails. Yeah. Um, I put this one in. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that this was. Razor had a press conference, uh, and yeah. it was actually pretty cool. Um, Razor, as you know, they make gaming peripherals and like headsets and like chairs and yes. like and computers. Um, they announced the 14 inch razor blade laptop and a razor Raptor 27 inch monitor. The monitor, I'm not so, you know, uh, thrilled about the laptop Mm -hmm. looking pretty nice though. The razor blade is like the only windows laptop that I would consider, uh, getting instead of a MacBook or like a side on the side of a macbook yeah uh because it's you know it's like an all it's basically a macbook that's black and runs on windows because it's all black it's aluminum uh uh, it's got freaking rg it's got rgb keyboard and each key is individually lit um anyway uh according to dextero here uh 
announced during the E3 keynote on June 14th that the gaming hardware company will be releasing a brand new laptop alongside a new monitor for gamers to purchase sometime soon. First off, we have the Razer Blade 14 inch, a beautifully new design laptop in the long classic series of Razer Blades. But this time around, they are not shying away from powering this beast up. Let me just scroll back for a second. This mother effer has an RTX 3080 <laughs> graphics card in it. It's a mobile version, obviously, but still, that's right. like pretty insane. Uh, anyway, uh, ultra thin. It's only 16.8 millimeters in height. Um, the way they worded it was weird. They said it's the world's thinnest 14 inch gaming laptop that's too specific right <laughs> yeah because 14 inch game- gaming laptop gaming how many laptops gaming laptops are, are 14 inches <laughs> well also too gaming laptops are no normally like thick They're yeah thick right boys. right so i guess because that looks like a regular ass laptop that looks yes. like you know, a regular like Mac Pro or or Surface computer or whatever. So I guess gaming laptop. Yeah, that's pretty thin for a gaming laptop. This is why I would consider this instead of a MacBook because look at how sleek that thing is. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it because I'd I'd still rather have a MacBook. I, but but you know, like streaming from a MacBook is trash. So having mm-hmm. a Windows computer to stream from would be amazing. And yeah, uh, this is the answer to that. But uh, you know. If I was a rich man, maybe. Because <laughs> this thing, uh, it's not, you know, it's not expensive. So if I was a Windows guy, I would get this. But uh, I'm not. I like Mac. So I'm going to spend uh, twice as much, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, it's got, some, it's got some beefy specs. It's got a hundred and, oh, no, you could choose between a 144 hertz display or a 165 hertz display. Jeez. Um it's got Wi-Fi 6E. I've never even heard of that. I don't even know what the E stands for. Whoa, that's an alien thing. Uh, oh, it's 6 hertz. Oh, it's uh, AX. I've heard of that. 802.11 AX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a new thing. Uh, anyway. Um, HDMI 2.1. Damn. Uh, this is pretty crazy, and it's all they don't say it here, but it's only uh, it's only seventeen hundred, I think. I tweeted good. a picture of it, seventeen ninety nine, uh, one thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars, which is really good. That's 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 the you know the baseline. You could of course get yeah. spec out higher, but that's pretty damn good for something this beefy and this slim. Um. Anyway, they also have a monitor, which is a pretty cool monitor, but it's a little, a little yeah. pricey, I think. Uh, monitor is getting pricey. I mean, the monitor I have is is, is pretty pricey. Yeah, uh, seven hundred dollars for this monitor, and I'm sure it's a great yeah. monitor, but uh, not really in the market for one of these, especially if it's like chrome it out. They did say that it, it's it's uh. It's an IPS display. It's good for like design and whatnot. Uh, they, yeah. they, they talked about it in, in the in the keynote, so that sounds pretty cool. So I'm sure it's a great monitor. Um, I don't know if it's worth throwing my monitors out for though. And then what's not here uh, is that. Oh wait, the the mount is a hundred dollars. Get the fuck out of here, dude. They're doing the Apple thing that the the freaking oh, mount. Costs you gotta $100. pay for that base amount. <laughs> They don't have it here, but they also announced, Will, you'll never believe this, the resolution, the revolutionary new wall charger. It's got a USB, a USB, a USB, and a USB for $179.99, Will. Uh, um, question? Yes, Will, yes. Will this, will this power the laptop they just announced? Actually, yes. I I think that the uh, okay. they announced it right after the laptop for some reason. Uh, but the laptop wait, this is up to a hundred watts. I don't know what that means. Um, this is a hundred and thirty watt charger, I believe. 
Okay. I don't know how many watts the laptop is, but I think it's less than that. So I think you're good. Okay. Well, now that you say it's 130 watts, the price makes a little bit more sense because I think 100 watt chargers are fairly expensive. Mm -hmm. But they're not $200 expensive. <laughs> Just you're not gonna be plugging in two of those laptops into this thing, or you're not gonna no. be plugging in a laptop and two phones or a tablet or something. You're not filling all of these things up, you know. Uh, maybe maybe four phones. I could see that happening. Uh, maybe, or maybe a laptop and a phone. But yeah, not not a you're not you know plugging in f four switches onto this thing or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, that it, 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 it's like, I understand. I understand the price point. It's a weird thing to put in your keynote, a charger, especially for that yeah. price. Like people are not going to respond well to, to that. Um, anyway, uh, they also, I, it's not here in the, in this article for some reason. Uh, they, 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 they made the concept for that mask. And oh Yeah during the keynote it's called project hazel during the keynote they uh talked more about the mask and they spent a long time talking about the mask and all they really said was it's coming q4 and they didn't give a price and the guy was like I'm sure you're all wondering when it's going to come and what the price is going to be. And you have a lot of questions, but don't worry Q4. And then he left. And it's like, you just said you were going to give us the price. And they're, they're talking about how there's a lot of research and development going into it, whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, whatever, but Q4, I feel like you're, you're kind of missing the boat on the, on the whole. Pandemic New York thing. just announced that they're lifting COVID restrictions. So yeah. Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. You're you're out of it. Yeah. So, real real quick, back to the charger. <laughs> uh, Anchor Anchor sells yes. a 100 watt charger that uh, also has two USB C ports and two USB A ports uh, for a hundred dollars, and it's a hundred watts. That uh, that is reasonable. Yes. <laughs> That's How many what I was ports say. did you say? Four, two USB C and two USB A. That's exactly what this one has. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. That is, it, I mean, yeah, it, I I can't imagine a world where I would want to spend a hundred and seventy nine dollars on a charger. I yeah. only like using chargers that come with the thing that I bought because I'm I'm anal about that. Yeah, I'm not, except for the <laughs> switch. <laughs> Right. Um but I still yeah, like two hundred dollars is so a hundred and eighty whatever. With tax it'll be two hundred, it's it's too much. Right. I mean it is nice to have one brick that has a bunch of ports in it, but Yeah, I guess if this is gonna be like in your like home or office, like this is not a vacation charger. Yeah, but still I mean Anchor sells a sells a much cheaper one, and Anchor's pretty good, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would only get that if I had the freaking laptop and I was like the only thing that charged it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fallout Punk, thank you for the subscription. Uh, all right, let's talk about Nintendo briefly. Okay. If you want to hear our Nintendo or my Nintendo thoughts, exclamation point video in the chat. Leave here right now. Go to YouTube and watch watch the today's YouTube video because uh, I'd rather you watch that then watch this yeah but you pause this go watch that and then come back uh <laughs> but anyway uh we don't know will's thoughts will did you even watch it i did i watched it twice actually because Whoa. halfway through my daughter was acting up and i had to stop and take care of her even right. though we watched the metroid dread reveal and she seemed into it yo once mario I'm golf came it. on she decided to act the fool I'm into Metroid Dread. I was not expecting 2D Metroid to I was, happen, and no, this I game was, looks friggin' phenomenal. I was pumped for this. Like, I was so excited because first they said Metroid Five, and you're like, "Oh my god, it's 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 a canonical sequel to Fusion." Holy crap! They're back to the original timeline and whatever. And then they called it Dread, and that just sends you into overdrive because if you don't know Metroid Dread 
was supposed to come out in like 2005. It was announced way back when. It was supposed to be a companion game to like Metroid Prime 3. They reference it in Metroid Prime 3, but it never came out. They like quietly canceled it. And I guess, you know, so, somewhere down the line, they're like, hey, we we need to put out a Metroid game because people are mad they're not getting Prime 4. Oh, what's this Metroid Dread we have in the file cabinet? Let's just do that. I actually didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, you didn't know that? That, that this was a, a canceled game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, in in reality, um, there was an interview with, um, I forget his name, but the creator of Metroid, and like so he's the producer of the overall series, and he said that they've, been tr they've tried to make Metroid Dread a few times, and they kept canceling it because they never felt like they could get it right. Mm -hmm. And then after they made Samus Returns, the the studio that made that they went to them and they said hey how would you feel about making metroid nice. dread and they said yes i think we can make this work and they made it work that's great i mean this yeah but i mean sam's returns looked awesome too and this is giving yeah. me some vibes with that but uh i mean it it, it looks like such overkill for a 2d game but i'm i'm here for it <laughs> yeah I like it. I like the gameplay mechanic of the, the Emmys, those little those little like android dogs or whatever that chase you and like mm -hmm. you can't kill them, so you just have to try to hide from them. Um that's that's a nice unique twist on the formula. Um Mecha Dragons brings up that the in the recent Nintendo Power podcast, Doug Bowser says that the game is going to wrap up Samus's two D story. Oh. I don't know what that Why? means. <laughs> But I feel like I don't think that means it's going to be the end of 2D Metroids, and I don't think that means we're not going to get like a Metroid Six. I think that's going to try to tie up as many loose ends as they can, so that if there is a Metroid Six, it'll be a fresh start. Right. Because at th at this point, how much more can you do? There are no more Metroids in the universe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that, and that's the that's the name of the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else were you interested in, Will? Uh, what else was I interested in? I was interested that Guardians is coming to Switch, even though even if it is cloud based. Uh, I was interested in Kazuya coming from Tekken coming to Smash Brothers. That surprised me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know much about Tekken, but I know enough about it to know that this is a big deal um it's, it's a not big, a sword guy it's a big deal that he killed captain falcon i'm very upset about that yes um i looked it up that is a reference to the fact that his father his Heihachi, threw him off of a mountain when he was younger i think isn't this a thing in the games doesn't he like throw all of his enemies yeah. off yeah 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 uh and then they show he gets like full demon mode and it's yeah, going to be another one of those cool. like limit things or or you know like uh like the yeah, more you fight it might the be more his, you... yeah it might be his final smash yeah i don't know i don't um, know if it's well it kind of looks like a move actually like like he, he just uh, so the oh, demon yeah, just right. comes yeah. out every once in a while um yeah i don't know i i mean i, yeah. I i'm sure this is a really big deal that he's in this game uh yeah. i'm probably never going to play as it i'll try it like once See yeah, it would be cool to see. Um, this will probably be a better... Now that uh, you got him and Ryu in the game, this will be a better Street Fighter Cross Tekken than the actual Street Fighter Cross Tekken was. Right. Um, what else was there? Monkey Ball Banana Mania looks awesome. It's basically a collection of the first two games, so, so which I got, is awesome. I got beef with that because when it, when it dropped... It looked like it was going to be Donkey Kong, and everybody was excited for Donkey Kong. It, it did look like it was going to be Donkey Kong. <laughs> um, um, but I mean, I like Monkey Ball. Monkey Ball is cool. Yeah. Uh, this is more so for my friends who are big Advance Wars fans. Advance Wars One and Two Reboot Camp is coming. Yeah, I know. That was really cool. I know a lot of people who love uh, Advance Wars. People love Advance Wars. And it's very weird. I I would never expect yeah. that to be a, like a game that people love. No, Advanced Wars is like big, mm -hmm. and it's it's. I'm happy for people that it's coming back. 
Um, I thought it was funny in the in the Mario Party Superstars reveal, which is like a collection of old mini games. They said you can play it online, all of it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they needed to make the distinction. Yeah. Um, I mean, we knew Mario Golf was coming, Super Rush, but this is like the first time I saw like a lot of it, and it looks better now than I than it did before, at least to me. Um, and they announced the free updates would be coming, which was cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's coming out real soon. Yeah. We all knew Mario Golf was going to come. Yeah. Uh, other than that... Uh, you didn't care for Breath my... of the Wild? Okay. Sequel to so... The Legend of Zelda. Oh, this is number one on trending, by the way. Even though nobody cares about it. Here's the thing about that. Yes, it's cool. Yes, I'm excited for it. The reveal didn't do anything for me. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm I'm with you. Like it it if I hadn't played Breath of the Wild, this would just look like more of the same. Yeah. It doesn't look like anything that's not I mean, I, I know like certain things aren't in Breath of the Wild, but that's only because I've played Breath of the Wild. So yeah. it it, it like this this scene right here looks exactly like breath of the wild if you showed me this yeah. i would have been like oh this is breath of the wild um i i mean the gameplay that they showed gameplay which is which is huge and i think that yeah. that looks good um i i'm disappointed we didn't get a name like i yeah. feel like that that would have been like the least like like that would have been the least they could do is give us the friggin name of the game <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's still called sequel to the legend of zelda breath of the wild which which means it's not they're not even saying breath of the wild 2 yeah uh very weird and so but they did give us the window of 2022 which in zelda yeah. terms means nothing because they could just yeah it'll probably it. be like 2025 <laughs> yeah uh but I mean, the 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 mystical mechanics look pretty cool. I'm interested in the fact that his arm looks weird and they haven't showed his face. And uh, I I didn't put this in my video, but um, somebody pulled up uh, some concept art from uh, how how can I find this? Somebody pulled up concept art from Breath of the Wild that went unused, uh, where he has mm -hmm. like this the a, a similar weird arm and his face is all weird it's a guardian oh here it is um this is taco he, he does a lot of like pokemon art and stuff yeah. um there's him with the arm and this is the concept art for breath of the wild where he's like this like a uh, yeah weird guardian looking guy and his face is all messed up so it looks like something might be wrong with link I just think his his like half of his body got messed up by by I, Ganon or something. I didn't notice this until somebody pointed it out to me on Twitter. His hair is much longer, yes, than it was in the first one. So he's clearly gone through some things. And his fingernails are longer too, for whatever that's worth. Oh, are they? <laughs> yeah, and like I didn't one sh that. one shot his fingernails on the hand with the with the weird stuff. That hand, yeah. the fingernails are longer for some reason. Um, but it can't. I don't. I originally, when I saw the long hair, I was like, "That could be Zelda." Yeah. For the love of God, just let us play as a badass <laughs> Zelda. Um, yeah. But uh, no, then then her boob would be out. Will. <laughs> That's probably not good for Nintendo. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. uh but what did you think about the game of Watch, Will? I mean, it would. Uh, okay, so. Those I have no real nostalgia for those games. One, yes. two. I was disappointed in the Mario game and watch. <laughs> Why? Because I don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't have fun when I play Mario on that. It's yeah, too no, small. It's this is like the worst way to play Mario, and the buttons yeah. are like gammy and like it's not. Yeah, and I don't think. I mean, maybe Zelda would be better because it's less of an action focused game, um, and. Link's Awakening is a portable game, um, but I don't know. I just not into it. 
Uh, so you probably you don't have to worry about me accidentally canceling your order. I'm probably not going to get it. Uh, I um, am excited that Link's Awakening's on it. I think that's great. When was the last yeah. time we saw a Game Boy game get ported? Or a first-party Nintendo Game Boy game get ported at all? Yeah. You know? So, like, that's... Not, not for a very long time. That's kind of great. Um, otherwise, yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's not the ideal way to, to be playing this game. Uh, Mecha Dragon with 30 bits. Bros, don't forget about the upcoming console releases for Plumbers Don't Wear Ties from Limited Run. Oh, yeah. Limited Run had, like, a really crazy showing, and they had a... They showed off a bunch of cool stuff, including Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. I don't classic. know this game. You don't know this game? It came out on, like, the 3DO back in the 90s, and it was... It purported to be a, an FMV game, but it's really more of, like, a glorified slideshow. And okay. it was really weird and bizarre... And made no sense and was well, unnecessarily sexual. Well, the Angry Video Game Nerd has a video on it from 10 years ago that has 8.4 million views. Yeah, I actually watched that video because it's like the definitive look at Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, honestly. Interesting. But yeah, it's it's just so weird and it's it's surprising but also not surprising that it's coming back. Because <laughs> Limited Run is... They they don't care. <laughs> Very. Strange. They also limited run also announced that they're going to be porting over Castlevania Rondo of Blood, which never got an, an original North American release. They're going to port that over to the Turbo Graphics sixteen. Oh my god, <laughs> that's wacky. Yeah. Last thing we have here. That's all. That's all of E three right there. That we just went through yes. everything that happened. Every notable thing that happened at E3. But you have Summer Game Fest here. That was like the day before E3. <laughs> yeah, I put that there because I figured I just wanted it to be comprehensive. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of it. There's a, a lot of games that, that were announced at Summer Game Fest. So I don't know if you want to go through all of them or like, if there are any like ones you want to talk about specifically. I remember people really weren't too jazzed about summer games fest so i was like not yeah. paying attention to much, much of this because i was busy living life uh and i yeah. was just looking on twitter every once in a while and people weren't making a big stake about stuff um and i see why i mean i'm looking at it now and like e3 kind of not a lot happened um yeah. until today with nintendo anyway we got tiny tina's wonderland which is tiny tina from uh uh borderlands yay didn't they have a gearbox had a thing right and freaking uh our favorite ceo whatever the hell his name is ron Randy howard Pitchford. <laughs> yeah he, like he was being weird and uncomfortable like in it and like, it's like on why the is set he allowed of, to on talk the set of the borderlands he was on the set of the borderlands movie i think oh yeah well, anyway, Metal Slug Tactics was the biggest deal that I saw out of out of this day of, of games. Yeah, it's weird because like Metal Slug is a great series, but it's a fast paced run and gun game. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not that. Interesting. But it looks like metal. It looks like classic Metal Slug. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks good. Uh, director's cut of Death Stranding. Excuse me. Isn't the whole game the director's cut? <laughs> Well, no, this one adds Metal Gear references. Oh. He hides in a box. I didn't think there were enough of those in Death Stranding. Um, uh, yeah. We also got Jurassic World Evolution. I didn't see this. Uh, yeah, Jurassic World Evolution 2. Uh, Jeff Goldblum is going to be in the game. Oh. I don't think anything else is really notable here. Yeah uh call of duty warzone season four i didn't see anything uh, about season four uh people are saying El elden ring which is the new from software george rr R. martin crossover oh that was at the end of this right that was the big yeah oh wait salt and sacrifice i know that game they showed off characters from overwatch 2 uh monster Hunt, monster hunter stories to <laughs> wings of ruin they showed off again <laughs> again that that thing's in the getting into every conference yeah back for blood 
There's a Stranger Things battle pass in Smite? What? Yeah, why not? Why not? Sure. Oh, uh, Evil Dead, the game. My friends are actually very excited for this. Okay. Well, there's a lot this of stuff. Is, this is Left for Dead. <laughs> oh, my God. With, with uh, the Evil Dead license. We got a freaking uh, near automata crossover with Fall Guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's the Evil Dead game. There's, uh, you know, honestly, everybody, I think this this is what won E3 for a lot of people. Elden Ring. Yeah. Um, it's the From Software game. From Software and George R. R. Martin. And it's a Bando name. Yeah. Namco Bandai or whatever. Yeah. Um I I I get why people like from software games. I uh it's too much for me. You know? I want to play Bloodborne. Yeah. I've never played Bloodborne. Bloodborne I feel like I would have liked. Um uh Dar Demon Souls, I just wanted to kill myself. That game was yeah. way too hard. Um this just looks like those games. <laughs> but then again, I'm not like a huge fan of those games. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm see sure there's like different, really. Differences and stuff that we can't see. Right. So, I mean, if you're into those games, check out Elden Ring. Uh, yeah. You get to ride a horse. That's different than those other games. I think it's open world. That's what makes it different. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to stick to my Nintendos and Xboxes. So overall, that's the whole, that's all of E3. That's everything yes. that happened at all this whole week. And I don't think there's anything left. Um, no, that was it. Apparently they did an <laughs> award show, like best of show, like right before we started streaming. Mm -hmm. Uh, but... and we found out that, uh, we all won. It was yes, the player. The real, the real, the real game of show was all of us. <laughs> was in us the whole time. It hurts. Uh, so, all in all, I think E3 was pretty lackluster, and I'm glad it was because uh, you know there's no, there was there was just wasn't there's nothing there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> Yeah. Companies have been saying what they want to say as they want to say it, which I think is the better way to do it. It is yeah. fun to have like one week of announcements to just fire out, but I think it's just better for everybody in the long term if the company just has an announcement and they do it on their own. They don't have to rely on the ESA. They don't have to rely on a week to do it. Yeah. Um, anyway, that being said, highlights for me, Metroid Dread, um, uh, I am a fan of that Zelda game and watch. I, th I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, and Microsoft has some good stuff. Yeah. Um, mostly just all of the stuff coming to Game Pass. I think that's a huge deal. Which is almost everything. <laughs> Which is almost everything. Uh, Starfield being exclusive. Uh, Flight Microsoft Flight Simulator coming to Game Pass. I think is freaking awesome. Um. And also uh, that 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 other game, the, uh, the 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 replaced, the Code yes. Sync game. Yeah. Uh, those are my highlights. I think. Do you have anything else to uh, add on top of that no, for your highlights? Definitely like the the same games. I would throw Guardians in there because that looked fun, but definitely, uh, Metroid Dread, uh, definitely all that stuff coming to Game Pass. Um, yeah, I I can't really think of aside from Dread any one game that like really stuck out stuck out to me like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's not like a few years ago where like there was Resident Evil Two and Spider Man and all this and that. You know, right? Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think it was an okay E three. I I would yeah. have expected a lot more going into the second year of of some of these new consoles but uh 
and also rumors of a Switch Pro. Like there, there's so there was so much potential yeah, for this year's I E3. Think, I think people just had it in their head that there was going to be a Switch Pro something, even after Nintendo specifically said this was going to be about software only. Um, well, all the rumors were saying that it was going to be before E3 that we were going to hear about yeah. a Switch Pro. I, I think part of why this feels lackluster is there was no Sony. Sony just was like, nah, we're too good for this. And I don't blame them. But uh, there, haven't, there hasn't been a Sony in like two years. They, um, they're they they're one of the big three consoles. And, and yeah. we're going to the second year of the PlayStation 5. So hopefully <laughs> we get a bunch of stuff from them from them soon anyway on their own time, which, you know what? I think everybody should do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that that's all we got for news yes but what we also have here will is the Twitter of the week Twitter of the week Twitter of the week that would be the tweet of the week uh yeah and here it is i pulled this up two seconds ago it is a quote tweet twitter gaming said the reveal that blew your mind this past week and it's a picture of Harley Quinn looking really perplexed at Batman. Will, explain this. So, there was an interview with the showrunners of the Harley Quinn show, the, the animated series that's currently on HBO Max, talking about all the things they're going to be doing in season three. Uh, but one of the things they said they were not allowed to do was DC specifically told them they were not allowed to write a scene in which Batman goes down on Catwoman. DC Why said not? superheroes don't do that. <gasps> they specifically said DC superheroes do not do that. Yes, they do. Now, uh, being a comic book expert, I, this is not the first time they've done weird shit like this. I tweeted this out. Um, they once told Neil Gaiman back in 1990 that nobody masturbates in the DC universe. <laughs> oh. So he was not allowed to write any more references to masturbation in Sandman. <laughs> What a sad world they live in. Yes. Also, I didn't tweet this out yet, but I have. There is a comic book. This is part of Kevin Smith's run on Green Arrow, where Green Arrow goes down on Black Canary. Oh, Green Arrow is the, the one to be with, Will. Yeah. <laughs> so let's be real. Bruce is not the romantic type. No. And, I, and I, AJ asked me about this, and I told him, like, he's a very closed off person. It, it probably took him years to open up to people, <laughs> let alone be good at sex. Right. That said, like, if you read Tom King's run on Batman, he, he's him and Catwoman fuck a lot. <laughs> at, at some point, he must have been like, I'll try it. So if they do that, why not? I feel like that's part of They're it. You know, they're, they're they're explicit. The reason that they gave why superheroes don't do that is because they sell action figures of these characters. <laughs> they sell Batman action figures to uh -huh. kids, and kids uh -huh. can't know about things like that. Oh, we've all made action figures fuck before. Yeah. What a, a bunch of pansies, Will. It's 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 a it's a dumb it's it, it, there's so many reasons why this was a dumb thing. It's not that it's it's not that big of a deal. It's more funny than anything else. But now it's leading to like all these other discussions that really aren't worth anybody's time. I was curious why like I knew the whole thing about Batman and Catwoman. I I was yeah. confused why Harley Quinn was in this, but I still understood what they meant for some reason. Yeah. But now it, I understand it's the Harley, that it was it's part of Harley Quinn's show. Yeah. Right, right, right. Which is an R rated risque show. Right. Harley Quinn does awful things in that show, and yet you still sell her action figure. Right. Very Batman strange. can't do one nice thing to his girlfriend. <laughs> it's a nice thing. People should know it's about nice it. Thing. Th yeah, that, that they, 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 they should be educated. Yeah. All right. We're talking to you people. Preferably not about that. <laughs> yeah, it's preferably about 
anything else, like things you left on last week's Wolf Den, Wolf Den podcast comment section, we will answer them right now. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everything else. Now, if you don't remember, last week's was pre-recorded, so we have two weeks worth of podcast questions to go through. Yeah, uh, buddy. We got uh, uh, from two weeks ago, we got Seven, who says, thanks for doing the podcast so Nintendo could finally drop their E3 plans safe in the knowledge you'd miss it. I don't get it. I don't oh, get it. That, that, so Nintendo could finally drop their E3 plans safe in the knowledge you'd miss it? I don't... We uh, could, Why? I don't get it. Uh, Chance Chaffin <laughs> says, I really enjoy watching Bob and Will be super confident about something they are wrong about. <laughs> then thinking it through and coming to the same conclusion of the article they just said was wrong 20 minutes ago. <laughs> we were probably reading about a Switch Pro, the Bloomberg Switch yeah. Pro situation. Um, what the hell? What, what the hell were, what were, was it? I remember we came around on a on a piece of it, but I don't remember what exactly it was. And you're of no help right now. I uh, no, my my things, my computer's locking up. Cool. At Trey, uh, I'm just ready for Nintendo to reveal the new Switch iteration already, so we can stop all this speculation. This should be tiring. Yo, the, the, these didn't age well. <laughs> Sleeping virus says I started watching as Bob was starting to become coffee Bob. Wolf Den veterans, what was it like before the to- the before times? In the before times. You don't don't act like you don't love it, okay? Uh yeah. a- Andrew C says I liked Werehog Sonic. It was great. You're, you're, Yo, you're, you you and the said- furries are the only ones. I made it cuz they did um at Summer Games Fest they had like uh of like uh sydney orchestra perform music from sonic unleashed which I, I tweeted to be fair sonic unleashed has very good music too bad the rest of the game you know the game is bad and people were like coming at me <laughs> saying like sonic unleashed is good like the werehog levels are good <laughs> they are so not they are not the sonic levels are fine they're ve- they're very good some of them are great the werehog levels are not <laughs> And half a good game means it's a bad game. Uh, last week's Wolf Dead Wife, 99% of comments are you and Wood make a cute couple and should do a show together. The community ships it. Yeah, we. I know. <laughs> uh, David Barber, best crossover since Jimmy Neutron and Fairly Odd Parents. They did. Oh, they did do a crossover. They did do a crossover. Trevor Steinberg, uh, Bob really filmed that intro from a hotel room in Vegas. LOL. What, what commitment? I knew I wanted to do that because I thought it would be fun. Uh, I brought all my stuff to Vegas in the event that Nintendo just sh- decided to drop news on a Switch Pro because I would immediately yeah. need to make a video. Uh, Fallout Punk 2077 says, I like this whole chat about what's going on with tech, gaming, what's on your mind podcast. Feels like I learned a lot. Oh, that's good. Emily Van Engen says, how am I now just finding out Bob can't burp? I got some news for you guys. I burped like two days ago. It came out. A burp came out like two days ago. I can so I. I, It's very film that. It's very rare that I burp, and I can't plan it. You know, it just happens. It escapes my body, and I can't control it when it happens. Um, But yeah, if I like have to burp, where a normal person would burp, I will just get heartburn. Um. Anyway, open serious fox. Thank you for the five months. How many subs to get Will in a maid costume? Well, how ma- what's a, a monetary value you would set to being in dressed up in the maid costume that now not only me but Jackson also wore? Or you could buy your own. I don't you, care. You would wash it, right? Yeah, or you could just buy a new one. It, it, whatever your True. preference is, because if there's a monetary value associated with it, we could shave a couple of bucks off of it. What what was um what was your threshold? A thousand subs. And and for the record, we dipped down to four hundred subs. So we're almost back to where we were before the maid outfit. So if you say a thousand subs, that's pretty reasonable, I think. 
Let's do fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred subs for you to wear the maid outfit for an entire Wolf yeah. Den live stream. Okay. Yes. All of the proceeds will go to Will for that. <laughs> for that <laughs> month, I guess. Um I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh also well, let's set a time limit on that. You got two months. Yeah. Because I don't wanna two months. I don't want a year from now we get to fifteen hundred subs, then all of a sudden I gotta pay Will for I, oh, yeah, I gotta wear a maid. The money. <laughs> yeah. No, you got you got uh three months. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Uh right. where am I? I, I lost. We got a one sixty four lewd Batman's in my Christian DC Discord server. It's more likely than you think. Free scan today. Oh my god. Um, and uh, John got that Juice UK with fifty bits. Wolf Den, did you see Trek to Yomi? I did. What not. is that? I have no idea. <clears throat> Trek to Yomi. Let me see. I don't, I don't see. Oh, video game. Uh, the Google search, Yana Caves Trek? No. What? The Google search didn't do. Oh, it's from. Wait, oh, it auto, it auto, feels <laughs> weird. I was gonna say this is a Devolver Digital game. Looks like a 2D Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, it does look like a 2D Ghost of Tsushima. Oh. 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 Okay, yeah, this looks nice. That's very pretty. Yeah, coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Series X, and PC next year. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see the Devolver conference. I, I usually like watching the Devolver conference. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Mecha Dragon, have the rest of my bits for the week, bros. Thanks again for the great podcast. Also, Bob, awesome Magic Spoon ad. It legit made me purchase some expensive cereal boxes. Thank you, Mecha Dragon. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope you like the cereal. Uh, Jay Sweez, thanks for the subs. Thanks for gifting a sub to Shahir Bear. Um, uh, where, where am I at? Uh, well, if the Islanders win the Stanley Cup, will you wear the dress? Oh, no, we already, no. We already discussed 1,500 subs. You got three months. But uh, I will I will be super ignorant if they win on the podcast. Like, I'm just <laughs> going to be, like, as obnoxious as it was at the start, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> uh, when do we, uh, will we, so next week? We'll know if they're in the Stanley Cup or if they're out of the Stanley Cup, right? Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay. I, I have to check the schedule. Okay, reasonable. Yeah. Um, all right. I think uh, I think we're done here. Will I think I think okay. we had a good time. We had a good little hangout sesh with all the people here, and we had a good talk about yeah. E three stuff. Um, so yeah. I uh I think if you have not seen my video yet, you should go watch it. Exclamation point video. Uh but also thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of it up over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wolf den podcast. So go over there and subscribe if you want to watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. No matter where you watch this show, though, or listen to the show, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. What the hell is Dan doing right now? Trying to see who's on that I haven't rated in a while. I usually rate the same people anyway. Um, I'm rating Dan. Dan, his title is Why Do I Do This to Myself? Oh, he's not even, he hasn't even started yet. Everybody go watch Dan. He'll be starting in two seconds. Yeah. Uh, 
I will be on tomorrow night. I don't know what I'm doing, but I need to stream a game because I got nothing on the Wolf Den Clips channel. Uh, but again, watch my video today. Please. It needs views. Uh, <laughs> I will uh, see you all later. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Say hi to Dan. Bye.